All right. Just waiting for the system to say that we are live, my friends. Welcome back to another live session and happy 4th of July to all of you that live in the United States of America and wherever you live in the world. I hopefully, hopefully you're having a great Monday. I was recently made aware of an interesting article that was published in the Toronto Sun suggesting that Canadians will never be fully vaccinated. These are the verbatim words from the health uh, minister, Jean uh, Yves Dokla said, he said, the definitions of fully vaccinated makes no sense explaining that even it's even more important now that shots are up to date. So we went from two weeks to flatten the curve to you need two shots every year to stay fully safe. Now, what we're going to do today, friends, is, you know, kind of talk about how this is absolutely ridiculous, number one. Number two, I want to share with you some resources about Omicron because we're hearing much more about the sub-variants of Omicron, which is, it's in and of itself a variant of the original strain that emerged, the Wuhan strain, uh, in, you know, January, February of 2020. So here we are, literally 50 mutations away from the OG strain which is the entire platform for which these vaccines are based upon, yet you have the first developed country that is admittedly saying publicly that you will never be fully vaccinated against this particular bug. It's going to be a, a perpetual, ongoing sort of thing. Now, that would make sense if people were dying in the streets, if everyone you knew was hemorrhaging like Ebola virus. But as I'm going to share with you some interesting uh, studies here, uh, some information to show that the severity of even these Omicron sub-variants are much more benign compared to other variants, for example, the Delta variant and, and, and the Alpha variant and other variants. So it's, why are we subsidizing junk food? Why are we offering children hyperpalatable processed foods? Why are we closing down the gyms, yet then also in the same light saying that we need people to continually get these boosters and that you're never going to be fully vaccinated? I mean, this is complete insanity to me. So, of course, I want to welcome you back. Thank you for being here live. Thank you for that like button. Thank you for your polite comments. We're going to have some fun today, but also talk about science as well. So, um, First of all, let's talk about this particular study. If you have friends or family or coworkers that are still double and triple masking and wearing gloves and using hand sanitizer, please share with them this study here. The title is, and you can just Google this, I will update the show notes after this live session. The title is Omicron, Virology, Aminopathogenesis, and Laboratory Diagnosis. This, to me, uh, as someone who follows the COVID-19 research, was one of the most I, it's a little bit old now, even a couple weeks old, but it, it's one of the most, I think, detailed overviews comparing the different variants, their immunopathology, uh, how they differ, uh, the immune escape, and uh, the severity. And so what I want to do, because there's a bunch of charts, oh, um, I don't want to do that. Uh, there's, a, there's a bunch of charts in here that I think are important to spend a little bit, bit of time with. And I'm, uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into expand this. Oop. Why isn't it uh, letting me drag and drop here? Okay. Ah, hold on. Normally this, this works, but of course we're doing this live and I'm having a little hard time expanding this picture. Ah, well, what I'm going to do is just move it right here. Okay. So hopefully you can see that a little bit better. And what you're seeing here is yes, there's increased transmissibility, but there's decreased virulence or the pathogenesis of these different uh, subvariants and, and, and variants or it's a lot more benign. Uh, and again, this is the title of the paper that we're looking at here. These are images. So again, you see governments throughout the world suggesting and hinting that you'll never be fully vaccinated because, of course, the virus is always changing. So therefore, we need to change our health prescriptions. Uh, but yet we now know from various academic studies that Omicron is even more uh, uh, benign. And there's even uh, more data here showing that there's enhanced vaccine escape with these subvariants if that hasn't caused the governments to change their recommendation. So uh, it, it's just an interesting thing, especially because we're not emphasizing actual health, mandating people uh, eat, say less than 20 grams of sugar per day, M mandating that people get 10,000 steps of exercise per day, uh, mandating uh, that, that we... Um, <laughs> Let's just pause that conversation. Let's talk about seeing science in the wild. You know, I was at a 4th of July parade earlier today and I saw a child, okay? I saw, you probably see children like this. Their parents are not wearing facial coverings. 
yet the children are wearing facial coverings. Now, anyone who knows the statistics with regards to COVID-19 severity, we know that it's there's a linear increase with age with regards to disease severity, uh, probability of hospitalization, death, and severe disease. Uh, and so children that are under the age of 15, like this young boy is, uh, his father and his mother were not wearing a mask, yet he was, yet he's hunched over on a cell phone. So if we're serious about helping people, why aren't we educating our, our, our parents about helping kids to be social. This was during a parade where everyone was looking at the parade. Yet the, a lot, I saw a lot of children today here in, in King County, Washington, that are wearing facial coverings, hunched over like this, ignoring the parade, not even aware that there's a parade, but they're wearing a mask. So seemingly they're doing everything right, according to the health experts, but this is this is just bad parenting. And I was at the grocery store yesterday, and I, I'm sure you see this, all of the time, uh, this site where you see individuals who are still wearing the facial coverings in the store. Okay, they're still wearing the facial coverings, but here's what they have in the shopping carts. Um, you may not be able to see what's going on here, but you had to have an individual. This was yesterday, okay, at, at the grocery store that I normally go to. He has not one but two facial coverings. He has three containers of ice cream, potato chips, candy. There's something else, some high uh, high sugar yogurt, okay? So if we're talking about following the science, if we're, if we're serious about immune health, where are the recommendations? I, I sound like a broken drum, but where are the recommendations for, hey, maybe you shouldn't be buying three containers of ice cream, buddy. Maybe you shouldn't be buying potato chips, cookies, and uh, yogurt that has more sugar than soda. I mean, just a thought. Just a, like if you're scared about Omicron that's even more mild than other variants, then shouldn't you be scared about prediabetes, diabetes, hypertension, obesity, polycystic ovarian syndrome? I mean, where's the recommendations? Why are governments throughout the world subsidizing the very foods that are causing people to be weakened, yet they're saying that you're never going to be fully vaccinated because the virus is changing? Uh, it's unbelievable. Now, as if that wasn't enough. What we have here, my friends, is a parade. I'm just going to give you an idea as to why I talk about COVID so much because it's all around me here in Washington State, okay? So many people are still masking outside. So many people are masking at grocery stores yet filling up their carts with complete garbage food. And what we see here is a individual uh, who is... Yeah, this was earlier today. It's 80 degrees out. Can you see the double face mask outside? Double! Is it wearing double face mask outside? I mean, my gosh, my friends, um, you could buy cotton candy around the corner at, at the vending thing, but yet you have all these people in a parade that are wearing facial coverings. This is absolute insanity. So clearly society has lost their priorities when it comes to health recommendations we are ignoring the elephant in the room. We've talked about this before. 80% of adults or more have some form of insulin resistance, meaning they're on the trajectory to developing type 2 diabetes, to developing cognitive decline, heart disease, cancer, and all of the pathophysiology that is associated with poor metabolic health. Yet you have so many people that are just passively improving their health by wearing facial coverings and running out to the drugstore to get the latest booster. Uh, and here we have data uh, quite clearly showing the immune escape. So what, what I thought was quite interesting is, um, well, there's things that, that will get us censored for even talking about, but read this, please check out this PDF, Google it, check it out, read it, share this with people that you know so that they better understand that, well, gosh, it seems that people, we're going to continue to get exposed to this bug and people are going to get reinfected. So shouldn't we then start to focus on the things that actually matter? And that's where I want to go. And I want to get to your live questions. And of course, thank you all for being here. Thank you for hitting that like button. Thank you for sharing the message that we need to make healthy living part of this conversation. My friends, the people that are getting sick are making poor choices. They're not exercising. They're not prioritizing their sleep. They're not getting sunlight. They're wearing sunglasses, they're wearing sunscreen, they're eating industrial seed oils, they're having sugar, right? They're mismanaging their stress. This is where we need to focus. I don't know how, again, this sounds repetitive to some of you, but the data is quite clear that, that underlying health really matters. 
and we're not we're not addressing that. We're not focusing on that. So I want to get to your life questions. Um, I, I and yes, we're going to talk about long COVID. Thank you, Jennifer, um, for for some of that. So anyway, friends, uh, first of all, if you're here right now, thank you for that like button. If you have any questions related to fasting, building muscle prioritizing sleep, optimizing your hormones, please leave them in the chat. We're going to get to some questions right now. And then also, friends, thank you for that like button. I do want to let you know that our show sponsor, Myoscience, we have a 36-hour 20% discount. You can use the coupon code here, July for savings. So this is saving for the 4th of July. Take a screenshot of this. If you've been wondering whether or not you should try the new electrolyte sticks by Myoscience, we have the Myo Relax and Calm, we have Berberine, we have a lot of great formulations. Uh, you can save by using this coupon code to save 20% off. This is going to be the last discount of uh, the summer here. So uh, definitely check it out. And then we're going to get to some of your live questions. And so again, the, the coupon code is July for savings to get 20% off, which ends tomorrow. Okay. So let's get to some of the live questions here. Um, okay. Oh, there's something else I want to share with you that was so funny. Uh, hold on. I, I'm just going to take a screenshot and then I'm going to have to upload it to Dropbox. Uh, as these questions are coming in, I need to share this with you. Um, this was absolutely hysterical. I, I There was this um, recommendations about how to stay safe from an epidemiologist. Uh, and you're going to get a kick out of this. This, this I thought it was satire. Uh, hold on here. So let me just get it to you real quick. Uh, Jessica um, uh, Rivera. Okay. So this is hysterical. Wait, this is not satire. When I share this post with you um this is a this is a legit post about how to stay safe this summer okay um so what i'm going to do is i'm going to upload it here you are going to seriously get a kick out of this when you see this okay hold on just give me half a second i had to do a lot of finagling just to get this over here um but again please post any metabolic questions that you do have and then we're gonna we are going to uh have some entertaining uh safety tips coming right now. Okay. So check this out. This is how you can stay safe. Again, while you eat corn dogs and cotton candy and uh, drink soda, this is how you can protect yourself um, this summer. Okay. Remember while you're munching on the corn dog, what you do is you pull your mask up over your face. Okay. Um, and so what you do, so you wear a mask even in a crowd. Okay. So eat your corn dog quick and then put the mask back on. And then you need to be aware, um, that, um, you know, the COVID molecule, the, the virus can transfer between tents and stuff. And, and so that's really important. Um, and then, uh, even though you're, um, going indoors briefly, uh, it's possible that the virus, uh, can infect you during fleeting encounters. So see this guy, he's, uh, he's wearing a mask, but he's of course getting a, uh, extra fr Frappuccino with two pumps of caramel uh, sweetener. Um, so he's wearing the mask. So he's, because you, it could get infect you just while you're paying for your, uh, 700 calorie cappuccino. Uh, and then the other thing that how you can stay safe this summer, um, is through rapid testing. Remember, it's really important that you, uh, you perpetuate all the fear mongering and, and you test repeatedly and all that single use plastic and medical waste. Don't worry about that because we banned straws, right? Remember those plastic straws that were so bad for the environment, but it's, but it's okay that we do these unlimited COVID tests, right? Anytime you get a sniffles, please go out and just increase the use of single plastic and waste and just, you know, keep polluting the oceans. But because you need to know if you, if the sniffles is just the sniffles or if it's COVID sniffles, right? So, so that's how you stay safe. And then what you do uh, is you check your symptoms on your phone and you do contact tracing uh, to make sure that it, it wasn't COVID, right? Because if you have yet the sniffles and you do the testing and you do the contact tracing and it turns out to be just the sniffles but not COVID sniffles, then, then that's okay, right? So, so this is how, of course, you stay safe in between bites of eating your corn dog and, and having uh, the, the Frappuccino with 700 calories, you know, um, 60 grams of sugar. So this is great. This is wonderful advice, my friends. This is exactly what the world needs. Uh, we need more testing. We need more single. We need more mass to end up in the ocean, of course. Like, I mean, come on. What? Uh, and we need more uh, contact tracing. That that's how we stay safe, guys. So, 
Um, just wanted to give you that little reminder this summer. You know, we, we need to follow the science. Uh, and I know a lot of you are following the science. So um, let's get to some real questions here. Again, if you live in Canada, if you live on the West Coast, you, you understand the frustrations because um, this stuff is, is absolutely insane. All right. Uh, Leanne Martin says, question, are liver detoxes necessary? I fell off my clean eating for a while and just feel weighed down. Uh, I'm thinking I need to do a liver cleanse to start um, uh, to start to back up in the right direction. Coffee enemas. Yeah, so coffee enemas can be great uh, if you're constipated. Coffee enemas, I think, are more uh, sort of beneficial in regards to um, cleaning, cleaning out the colon, so to speak. I don't know if there's any data showing that coffee enemas increase detoxification or there's some purported benefits of maybe increasing the liver's glutathione release. You know, if you want to increase glutathione release from the liver, I would suggest just consuming oral and acetylcysteine and glycine. So that's going to be a, a great way to uh, improve sort of de phase two detoxification, Leanne. So that's a great question. So you can do that. But, you know, um, the best detox, honestly, is just to go to do a fast. You know, if you're like, look, I've been eating like crap. I've been overeating. I've been having sugar and things. You know what you can do is you can just do a 36-hour fast. You can just not eat for a day, 24 hours. Um, so that's what I would suggest. If you're feeling weighed down, you've been eating crap, you can use that as a reset and then start to have regular, consistent home-cooked meals from there. Um, but uh, really no research to show that coffee enemas do any magical or offer any magical detoxification um, properties outside of the fact that they remove some of the sort of fecal matter in your colon. So that's a good question. JW um, uh, says that he's not a fan of raw meat, but definitely raw honey is good. Um, I'm a fan of, of honey of all sorts, especially, um, you know, if you have allergies and, and make sure the honey that you consume is from bees that are uh, local to you. Okay. Um, Dahlia says, uh, LOL, the best is when I see people walking alone with their dog when they're wearing a mask. Yeah, or walking a dog or like this 13-year-old boy by himself ignoring the entire parade, not with his family, wearing a mask but hunched over on his, on his phone. Uh, it's just really sad to see that. People say, oh, kids are resilient. Really? Are they? Are they really, really resilient? Ask a child who was abused. They'll remember that for the rest of their life and they'll have... Uh, memories about abuse. Kids are, they, yeah, they're resilient. They can bounce back, but their life, uh, you know, that two year, this two year COVID period is like one fifth or one, you know, 25% of their life. You know, if they're 10 years old, for example, it's been two and a half years. So it's about a quarter of their life or, you know, some such. So uh, yeah, it's, they are resilient, but they're, these hats are sticking and these sticky habits with regards to masking, sanitizing, distancing, uh, home learning is clearly negatively impacting uh, children. Okay. Crispy says, question, are 12 masks enough to stop it? No, you need 15. That's what the scientific literature shows, 15 facial coverings. Uh, and it's just two more weeks and the curve is going to be flat. It's going to be totally flat. So just everyone, 15 masks for two more weeks, and this thing's going to be over. Okay, so thank you for that great question. Okay. Uh, any advice for atopic beats? Okay. Hmm. Are you talking about biurnal beats that go in your ears that kind of help um, with circadian rhythm and, and cognition uh, and alpha waves and things like that? Or are you talking about putting the vegetable, the root, the tuber on your skin. Uh, I'm not really sure about your question, Felipe, so please clarify. Okay, Zara says, uh, Zara says, I fasted for nine days once and it was very healing. Yeah, so some people can get a lot of benefits from fasting. Uh, nine days is quite um, long, but but good but good for you for, uh, for doing that. Okay, let's see here. Um, Blas says, Mike, have you seen the data from countries publishing sudden drop in fertility? No, I haven't seen that data. I, I should uh, certainly look into that data. Um, thank you for letting me know on that. I, I will do that. Um, Ellen says, are, are any of these people who seem to know how bad it is for some of the people? Uh, okay. 
wasn't really sure on that. Um, another question said, came in here. Uh, it's hard for me to have dinner when the kids are still awake. Whenever I try to eat while they're still awake, I get bloated. What do I do? Um, why would you get bloated? I'm not sure why you would get bloated by eating around your kids. Um, I think meals should be consumed as a family. This is really important. Um, teach your kids routines, habits, uh, rituals. You eat together, you talk, screens are off, no phones, no TV, eat um, with, eat together. I think that's, that's really important. Um, so Dahlia, try to eat with the family. Okay, Claudia says, have you heard of Carrie uh, Millis, the creator of PCR? Uh, he would have been totally a savior with this. No, I have not heard of this individual. Um, but I will look into that. Uh, Jennifer says, I've read somewhere that really got me thinking if kids are resilient, then why do so many adults need therapy? Bingo, Jennifer. Yeah, everyone says, oh, kids are resilient. We can put them on screens. We mask them. We distance them. Oh, right. Tell that to a child uh, who has been teased or made fun of. Um, there's a, a, a video, a viral video with like 40 million views of a gentleman in his 50s who is, the title is like, um, uh, man grown man gets retaliation against uh, elementary school bully. Uh, it's Google that to some effect. And the guy goes off on the uh, someone who bullied him one time in elementary school. He's still pissed off in his 50s, right? So all this talk of kids are so resilient, um, I, I don't I don't I, I don't buy into that, okay? Susanna K says, our kids had to wear masks at school and my son would come home off the bus and go straight to his room and still wear his mask. Um, I'm constantly having to remind him to take it off. Yeah, Susanna, um, I see that all around our neighborhood. It's super sad uh, to see that. It makes me, um, it causes me to, it, it's frustrating to see, especially because they're so low risk uh, and have been throughout the entire uh, thing here. Okay. All right. Any other metabolic health questions? Oh, we got here. Um, Mike, why is there a surge in deaths in working people between the ages of 18 and 64? Life insurance products exceeded $5 billion in the last six months of 2021. I think you know the answer to that. Um, crazy stuff. Hannah says, I was just wanting to go to the Philippines in December to visit family, but my mom told me that I still need to quarantine for five days since I'm not taking the thingamajiggy. So crazy, I guess I cannot really go. Yeah, I have family members who can't go to Canada for that very reason, which is crazy. Um, okay, great comment here from Leanne. Leanne Team Racing says, uh, imagine knowing for the last two years that 78% of severe illness from COVID is obesity, and we never talked about eating healthier or exercise. Instead, they told us to stay inside. And they close the gyms and they encourage us to order fast food. I know it's insane. Okay. Sunny girl says, can you do a video on how quality of food impacts mental health of children, families? Uh, another shooting today in Chicago. Yeah. The data is, is quite clear on that. There was, um, we, we talked about this before, uh, omega-3 fats, for example, uh, the omega-3 fat status. Um, this is red blood cell, EPA, DHA, um, actually uh, is linked with uh, more, a low EPA DHA uh, quantity in the red blood cells linked with more violent, violent crime uh, and things like that. So the, the links between, uh, and think about where all the crime occurs. It's in food deserts. These aren't on farm lands, you know, organic farms where there's mass shootings. These are within urban settings where there's fast food restaurants and convenience stores on every single corner. Uh, and those are the foods that most criminals are consuming due to food scarcity, due to poverty, due to all these different you know, societal uh, issues that are a whole nother uh, sort of conversation. But it, it is important to understand that there is a connection here. There is uh, an important uh, aspect to violence, uh, to criminality with regards to mental health, with regards to nutrition that we need to focus on. So... Um, yeah, really important stuff. Uh, Asian Posh says kids on the autism spectrum need to have socialization. Absolutely. Uh, the pandemic has had catastrophic effects on these kiddos. Couldn't agree with you more. Uh, really important stuff here. Um, so yeah, it's, it's really, really tough. All right. Um, Ellen has a question here. 
how low of a diastolic blood pressure is okay um, with a systolic diastolic of, of 116 over 60, heart rate at 49, uh, 49 uh, beats per minute. Okay, so yeah, um, it, it's, it's a good question. So the diastolic is going to be sort of your static background blood pressure um, and you know the 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 um, the the systolic is meaning when the, when the heart is actually beating. So yeah, lower is good. Uh, you know, I think if you have a, a blood pressure of one sixteen over sixty, I don't believe that would be in the realm of of it's too low or too uh, dangerous. But only only you would you would know. You know, when you exercise, when you rise and stand, do you get dizzy? Okay, why is that? Are you underweight? Is there anemia? Are there other factors going on that are causing that? Are you dehydrated? Things like that. So um, blood pressure, it's good to have low blood pressure, but too low can be can be problematic. So um, yeah, great, great question there. Okay. Do you think people can be healthy only when eating carnivore? Uh, can they be okay without fruits and vegetables? You know, Thurston, I mean, this is a great question. I was talking with a friend about this the other day. It's like, you know, I don't... Most of the nutritional uh, information that we get is from uh, nutritional epidemiology. So this is looking at cohorts of people that live in certain populations and certain regions of the world and observing what they eat and looking at longitudinal outcomes and things like that. And we don't have any longitudinal studies on a carnivorous style diet, but we do have anecdotes. We do have uh, individuals who have been doing this for a long period of time. I think if you eat organic uh, locally grown fruits and vegetables that agree with you, that don't cause you gas and distension and constipation and diarrhea and don't flare your allergies or your autoimmunity. I think there's no problem consuming vegetables and carbohydrates uh, in moderation, especially if they're seasonally grown uh, within a hundred mile radius from where you live. No problem with that. Um, I think the challenge is when we're importing fruits and vegetables, when we're uh, eating a lot of things out of season, we're having dried fruit in the winter, for example, um, that's not not so good. And so I think we need to approach this through the lens of seasonality. And so in the summer months, you know, you go outside and you see apple trees in my in, in my yard or here in Washington state, you have blueberries. Is there a problem eating those if you're metabolically healthy? If you're physically active, no, I don't think so. Okay, uh, so long as again they're not causing gastric distress, constipation, diarrhea, they're not flaring your allergies and autoimmunity. You know, most people that seem to benefit from a carnivorous style diet are overweight, insulin resistant, and people that have autoimmune disease. Okay, so if you don't fall into that category and you're physically active, you know, you can have moderate amounts of, of vegetables that agree with you. I think that's that's perfectly okay. But it's a great question. Hey, Mike, what's a good time frame for max fat loss in a fast? Um, yeah, um, it really depends on your level of metabolic health going into that. So if you're reasonably metabolic healthy and you fast for 36 hours, fat oxidation is really starting to increase because, of course, what is happening uh, is your glycogen has been depleted. Uh, and you're getting an increase in ketogenesis, the formation of ketones, and, and you're oxidizing fats for fuel. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to lose that amount of body fat. The best way to lose fat long term is to build healthy muscle so that your resting metabolic rate is increased. And so uh, resistance training, high-intensity interval training, periodic time-restricted feeding, I think is going to be a better approach, uh, Patur. So thank you for that. Um, I, I wouldn't suggest five, six day fasts are good for obese individuals. Uh, if you're metabolically healthy, wouldn't recommend a five to six day fast. Okay. Another question here about, uh, the sauna bags are great. There's a question on sauna bags, uh, and so forth. So sauna is a great way to increase sweating. Sweating is a great way to help to detoxify heavy metals, persistent organic pollutants. It's a good way to move blood and lymph throughout the body. So heat is a great uh, at adapt, uh, great way to get a hermetic stressor or uh, adapt uh, your thermoregulatory system. So that's great. Uh, contrast therapy is great as well. Okay. Laura says, any advice for why I don't feel good after sauna or cold therapy? I get chills and feel weak, but totally fine with cold therapy by itself. You know, I'm not sure, Laura, uh, why that might be. Um, that's a good question. You know, everyone, there's a lot of individuality sort of baked in 
um, to all of these different modalities, whether it's infrared sauna therapy, um, you know, contrast therapy, all of these things. There's, there's so many different uh, caveats and nuances. Um, I would say make sure that you're properly hydrated, that you've taken uh, electrolytes before a sauna session in, in between uh, consecutive sauna sessions. That's why we built the electrolyte sticks. Uh, for some of you that don't know, creatine paired with your electrolytes like sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium actually makes the electrolytes get into the cells better. It's a facilitator. And so that's why we include the creatine in the electrolyte sticks. But it's, it's just important to stay hydrated. You could be getting dehydrated then feeling a little bit off. Um, we talked about that a lot with James and Nicola Antonio on a recent podcast. Okay. Um, Shannon says, does your website have a guide on the most important practices people should follow for metabolic health? Any book recommendations? You know, I'm working on a book to this very effect. Um, I'm, my aim is to have it done by, by August. So uh, keep that noted, uh, Shannon. Thank you for that. Okay, Ed says, Mike, what tests or series of tests are you recommended to identify DHEA? Okay, very simple, DHEA sulfate, DHEA-S, okay? So um, I'll type that in the chat. For testing DHEA, DHEA, S, all right? And then what I'll also do uh, is link uh, a video that we recently did all about DHEA and dosing. So DHEA, and so what I'm gonna do here is just copy this and put this in the chat. So if you guys and gals are watching uh, this replay or you're here right now, uh, check out this link. I just posted it there. Uh, you can learn a little bit more about DHEA. Okay. Rachel has a comment here. Rachel, thanks for your transparency. Rachel Ann Hicks. Um, I'm not going to read your comment because, of course, uh, the the uh, Google overlords may not like that. But um, thanks for your transparency, Rachel. And uh, uh, God bless. Uh, continue to exercise. The best way to support immune health uh, is exercise, is sleep. Sauna contrast therapy are going to be going to be very helpful. So, um. Okay, James says, Mike, what are your thoughts about the health effects of turmeric and black seed? Yeah, um, I'm a big fan of turmeric. I'm a big fan of cooking with turmeric because you want turmeric to be absorbed and mixed in with fats. So using ghee butter, using coconut oil, curry dishes, things like that. Turmeric is going to be great. Uh, I am a fan of that. Okay. Claudia says, uh, would you mind sharing the brand? I have RA and it will help, greatly help with inflammation. Um, I guess I must have missed the original question that Claudia had there. Oh, okay. Um, Hannah says, hey, Mike, there are really a lot of people having heart issues after taking... Um, also, uh, my relaxing calm is one of my favorite and I sleep great. Hannah, thank you for that. Uh, yes. Well, uh, to your first part of the comment, um, there's pathophysiology linked with one of the uh, immunologic targets, uh, and we've talked about this before, but the spike protein, um, it's not benign. Who would have known? Who would have thought? And that's so why that could be part of the issue there. Um, so that's why I'm a big fan, friends, especially your friends that are getting boost, boosters, donating blood periodically, reduce that blood viscosity. So um, that's something to think about. Uh, another question here about ulcerative colitis. I have ulcer ulcerative colitis and IBS. I follow a grain-free diet, uh, uh, dairy-free, legume-free, but I've had to experiment with different vegetables from time to time. Yeah, so experimenting with what vegetables work, the preparation of those vegetables, um, all of that, taking the seeds out of your tomatoes and zucchini, de-seeding those, um, you know, great, great thing to sort of think about. Okay, how long before the body produces human growth hormone during a fast? You know, this is a, an interesting thing to think about here. Uh, it, it's probably within the first 18 hours because of uh, what human growth hormone actually can do is increase um, gluconeogenesis and, and glycogenolysis and so forth. So growth hormone is involved in, in glucose production and it might... Uh, it, it, you know, because what happens is you, you deplete glycogen within the first 24 hours. And so there could be a, a surge in growth hormone, but you know, what's going to happen, my friends, the best way to get a growth hormone surge is go to bed early. Don't be on your screens before bed. Don't be watching television before bed. Um, so that's going to be a great way to increase growth hormone habitually, regularly. So keep that in mind. 
Okay. Uh, eating right and living a healthy lifestyle is important to reduce the risk of severe COVID disease. Boom. We've talked about that data extensively on this YouTube channel. I know a lot of you are here because you subscribed to those videos uh, over the past um, so, so several years. So thank you for that. Okay. Mike, which is the best electrolyte supplement? So look, um, we formulated the electrolyte sticks because it's the best out there. Uh, links are below. Hands down, no questions asked. Um, there's a lot of a lot of knockoffs uh, out there, but this is one of the best electrolytes, um, and we stand behind that, okay? So thank you, Texas Native, for that comment. Okay, Ellen says roasting vegetables is fantastic. Yeah, when you roast the vegetables, they take on some of that flavor from the grill. They taste phenomenal, so I'm with you on that. Okay, the most mind-boggling thing to me is that I have friends and family that have shunned me because I don't drink the Kool-Aid, but if they aren't protected, come on, uh, common sense is out the window. Yes, I know. We've all gotten shunned. Uh, strongly suggest you read this paper right here. Omicron Viro Virology, Immunopathogenesis and Laboratory Diagnosis. Check it out, please. Okay. I know a lot of you have to get going. Um, do you use any sort of milk or is it just straight? Um, the milk that, that we use in our family is going to be raw A2 dairy. So unpasteurized dairy from A2 cows. Um, we have a super chat here. Thank you, uh, Leanne Martin. Thank you, Hannah Castillo. Uh, really appreciate that super chat. Really appreciate you all being here. Uh, Laura says, Mike, I live in Japan. Will the electrolytes ever be able be available over here? Uh, we do ship to Asia quite frequently, but I, I don't know how frequently we ship to Japan. But if you get USPS, US Postal, uh, to Japan, we can get that um, over to you. Okay. Uh, meat in my teeth says, are the electrolyte six compatible or safe during pregnancy? Yes, there's no sort of contraindications with pregnancy or lactation and kids can have them as well. So uh, they are low in, um, uh, in you know, any sort of contaminants, things like that, really clean nutrients, real salt and so forth. So that's great. Uh, Nish, I'm gonna get to your question here, but because we're on the topics, Topic of electrolyte. I would like to address Michelle Stewart's question. Mike, how salty are your electrolytes? I like the LMNT. Are they similar in sodium? Uh, they have less sodium. So Michelle, um, the salt sources are different. The LMNT just uses Morton table salt. Okay, we're using real salt. Okay, salt is very affordable. You shouldn't be paying forty bucks a month for salt. Okay, I would implore you to just look at one of those brands that you mentioned, and then look at the ingredients in the electrolyte sticks. We have three times of magnesium about four times of potassium. We have creatine, we have taurine, we have a little bit of potat or sorry, calcium citrate uh, and, and sodium citrate. Um, and so these are, are things that help the electrolytes be absorbed. These really work. Uh, anyone read the over 200 some odd comments in the last several months on the website. So um, don't pay 40 bucks a month for salt, right? You can buy salt, uh, real salt and salt your food. Um, but we have 310 milligrams of sodium um, but uh, again, the sodium source is totally different. We're not giving you any Morton's table salt. It's real Redmond salt, okay? So great question there, Michelle. Okay, any tips on helping to avoid extreme vascular damage from the V? Yeah, so exercise uh, is gonna be very important. Walking, going in the sauna, going in a cold plunge, walking after meals, donating blood. Those are gonna be the tips that, that I would suggest here. Okay. All right, uh, Princess Yuan says, fasting insulin is 12.9, hemoglobin A1C is 5.7. When and how much metformin, how much? Ooh, a lot of questions there, Princess Yun. Uh, well, first of all, your hemoglobin A1C seems quite good. The one-off fasting insulin, I would retest that at, at 12.9. Um, but if it were me, what I would suggest is uh, met, uh, berberine or metformin, uh, in the evening, maybe 500 to 1,000 milligrams per day and kind of see what happens. Um, yeah, so check it out. Isn't raw milk dangerous to drink? If you know if you know your farmer, uh, there's, there's a lot of good research, a lot of nutrients in raw milk that are not in pasteurized, homogenized milk. So um, yeah. AO says both are a ripoff. Both meaning what? Creatine, taurine, and the real sodium. Uh, our margins are... Not what you might think, my friend, uh, including all those different nutrients. And if you stack them up to other things that are out there, 
not a ripoff. Okay. What else? What else? Brussels sprouts got crispy like chips. Okay. I'm in Texas. This is Thurston says, I'm in Texas and I've been getting raw milk from a farm and it seems to be much easier on my stomach than pasteurized milk. Yeah, past, ultra pasteurized homogenized milk is not easy to digest, my friends. Um, have I bothered to look in? So this is a AM1. Have I bothered to look into the work of Thomas Cowan and Kaufman and Lanka? Yeah, we've interviewed them on this podcast. So definitely uh, search for that. We've had them on our shows. Okay, uh, Stephen Haugen says, if I intermittent fast for 17 hours a day, am I at risk for pulling my hamstring when I run sprints due to the muscle weakness? I do cardio in the a.m. pre-first meal of the day. Uh, Stephen, um, doing a 17-hour fasted workout is not going to increase your susceptibility to a hamstring strain. Um, it might help you potentially increase fat oxidation during the workout, but you might also not get the best workout. I'm a bigger fan if you're going to try to crush it in a workout to actually have food. So that's what I would suggest. Uh, Zahara uh, Bar David says, Mike, some of the best advice you've ever given uh, is to take a brisk 20-minute walk after dinner. Yes, very important for sleep, very important for blood sugar regulation. Great, great point there. Okay, Johnny White says, uh, I use the sticks here in Texas with my garage gym. It's a must. We ran out of my second order. Flavor is just right. Yes, so thank you for that, my friend. And also, um, if you need to reorder, you can save 20% off today and also tomorrow, uh, July 6th, uh, July 5th, sorry, uh, using the, the code here, July for savings over at Myoscience. Check it out. You can use that code to save uh, if you are so interested. All right. Do you suppose that raw or A2 milk would be safe for ulcerative colitis? Dahlia, the only way to know that is to try it yourself. Everyone's a little bit different, so give it a try. Okay, what are your thoughts on apple cider vinegar and the best way to take it to lose weight? I, I don't think it's a, a cure-all for weight loss. I really don't. I'm sorry. Um, lift weights. Lift weights. Go to bed early. Walk after meals. That's going to be way better than apple cider vinegar. Could you take a little bit before bed? Could you take it before a meal? Sure. I wouldn't expect miracles, though. That's just what I would say. Mike, have you heard of Robert Lustig? Yes, and I've heard him speak, and I have his books. He seems like a good guy. Uh, yeah. Um, okay, is he sitting in a steam room or sauna for eczema? I've heard that heat can make the rash worse. Well, sauna is a great way to decrease the inflammatory response. So um, who knows? Who knows on that? Um, but give it a try. The only way to know for the guys, you got to try this stuff. Just try it out. You might hear something, but try it on yourself to see if whatever the person says do, it does or doesn't do actually works. Go in the sauna. It may not cause your psoriasis or rosacea to flare. Okay. Um, Brother-in-law got four doses and so got COVID. Yeah, we're hearing about that a lot. It's crazy. Um, okay, friends. Well, um. I see you, AM1. I see you. I'll, I'll check that out. Okay, uh, friends, very grateful that you're here. Thank you for that like button. Thank you for subscribing. Uh, hopefully you had a great 4th of July holiday. i um, really grateful that uh, we can all have fun with all the insanity in the world uh, and still talk about health. We need to focus on uh, metabolic health, uh, mental health, exercise, and all of that. So um, thank you again for being here. Thanks for that like button. Check out the sale over at Myoscience today and tomorrow, the 5th of July. It ends 20% off. And we will catch you all soon. Have an awesome rest of your day. Bye now.